Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Paul Che and today I'm going to be showing off my manga haul for the month of March. And uh, this time around, I did get a lot more manga compared to the month of February. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys what I got this month. So let's go ahead and get started right away. And we're going to start off with our uh, my Dark Horse pickups. So we got I Am A Hero Volume 9 or Omnibus Volume 9. I think the 11th Omnibus is the final one, but uh, as usual, still can still is the best zombie manga that I've ever read. And then we have Fate Zero Volume 8. And to my surprise, we actually get to see, let's see if I can find it, we actually get to see Enkidu right here, which is something that uh, Fate Zero anime never showed, and I don't know if the light novel uh, talked about him. So, pretty interesting to see Enkidu, who is a really beloved fate character actually surprisingly all right so we got seven C's next and we have Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs volume 5 as usual this is a guilty pleasure of mine and I have no shame in reading this or showing this off to you guys it's just a fun silly thing to read Arpeggio of Blue Steel volume 14 um, I probably need to do some Google search and figure out if this series is ending because I've been told it was but then I some people told me no it's not true so I don't know I'll have to do some research on it and that's it for 7c so let's go on and move on to yen press <clears throat> so we got volume 24 of the tomb and uh, the final volume is just right around the corner and I I haven't read this volume yet but I really really want to read that split ending that everyone keeps talking about or that one that everyone keeps telling me about so uh, pretty excited to start reading that uh, we have something new uh, this actually was given to me as a gift from a friend and it's called dead mount death play which I have no idea what this is about um, it's just something that my friend said that I, she thought that I might enjoy so I skimmed through this a little bit and uh, it seems to be some sort of, some sort of, uh, I guess, battle royale manga. I don't know. I, I, I may be wrong. I have to read this just to figure out what what this is all about. But what I can say is that I am digging this art style right here. So, uh, looking forward to this. And then finally, we have a oh, what's it called? Kake Gurui Volume Nine. Uh, this series is still, uh, you know, an interesting gambling series. And uh, honestly, I have no idea what the direction of this series is. It just, it just keeps on, uh, it just keeps on showcasing our main, our main heroine Subame, uh, who just keeps on getting into these crazy gambling situations. So, yeah, not sure where this is gonna go, but it's still fun to read, I suppose. All right, so up next we have Viz Media, and first up we got Food Wars Volume Twenty Nine. So. Uh, it's worth mentioning that volume 30 is the final volume of this major arc. Basically, it's the final volume of everything that we've read from volume one all the way to volume 30. So uh, I know how it's gonna end because I have read ahead, but needless to say, I really wish that Food Wars would have ended there, but I guess this is still uh, way too popular over there in Japan. And Shueisha is saying, yeah, yeah, you guys keep pumping out chapters so that we can make more money. I, I, I don't know. So I am a little concerned where it's going to go from there. But, you know, Food Wars has been a long running series that I've enjoyed from day one. So it's kind of hard for me to just, you know, abandon the series. But yeah, I just have to point that out. I am concerned where this series is going to go from there. The Promised Neverland Volume 9, of course this series still continues to be an amazing series. The anime adaptation was actually good. I'm very impressed and I'm glad that uh, Cloverworks, which I guess used to be uh, A1 Pictures, did a good job of animating it. So uh, I haven't read the ninth volume yet, but uh, I'm very excited to get into it. Up next we have Yona of the Dawn Volume 17, still is a great shoujo series, highly recommend it even if you guys are not a shoujo fan. Volume 3 of We Never Learn, now I saw the first episode of We Never Learn anime and I will go ahead and say this right now, it was 
a pretty big disappointment, mainly because the anime the animation quality is not that great, uh, and basically the odd color choices used in the anime just doesn't look appealing at all. So it was quite disappointing from what I've seen on the first episode. But who knows? Maybe it will get better from there. So I hope I'm wrong because the manga is great. It's really funny. It's unique. It it's kind of like the quintessential quintuplets, uh, just a different, just a, I guess a different approach to that whole harm situation. But yeah, if the anime is not that great, then this is where I will say just read the manga because the manga is great. And in the last of the Viz Media pickups, we have My Hero Academia Volume 18, which of course. This really, I really don't need to say much about My Hero Academia. It's just an amazing shonen series. And I think a fourth season is coming up. I, I don't know. I, I don't follow, I don't closely follow the news that often anymore. So yeah, if there's a fourth season coming up, then uh, that's something to be excited for. All right, so we have this one pickup from Vertical Comics, and that is After the Rain. And this is a... A really good, a surprisingly really good series that is a story about a young teenage girl who's in love with a 45 year old guy, who a single 45 year old guy who, well, uh, it's kind of a, kind of a, I wouldn't say controversial, but it's a pretty heavy subject, a lot of heavy subject matters are covered in this series. So this series is definitely for a mature audience. So something like that is right up my alley and the story is actually pretty interesting and I'm enjoying for what I've read so far. All right, and the last up we have our Kodansha pickups. It's just two uh, two books, and we have first up we got the quintessential yeah the quintessential quintuplets volume two, and the, so the anime was okay. It was not the best, it wasn't perfect, but it was great. So this series as a whole is something that I wholeheartedly recommend because this is a harm series that basically defies all the tropes that all the common. The, basically the common annoyances that you see in a lot of etchy and harm series uh, it uh, kind of similar to we never learn but this is different I I, I, say, I would say it's different than uh, we never learn but even if you're not a fan of etchy or harm genre I I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly recommend this series it's such a fun read and uh, I don't think you it'll disappoint you in any way so Go ahead and check it out if you guys want. Uh, that's just what I have to say about it. And then finally, we have something I've been looking forward to for quite some time, and that is Glepnir Volume 1. This is uh, something that I stumbled upon online, and I decided to read the first volume online, uh, you know, sadly. But it is something, it is quite an interesting and crazy thing that I have basically read. It features a, the story is about a young boy who uh, who mysteriously transforms into this uh, this uh, carnivorous looking dog mascot, and uh, he basically meets this crazy psychopathic girl who uh, gets inside the suit, and it from there just so many crazy and insane things happens, and I can't wait to get more of this. So, and there is an anime adaptation coming up for this series, which. It's pretty surprising and I am a little concerned because I know a lot of stuff is going to get censored so but that's the unfortunate nature about anime adaptations uh, covering violent series like Glepnir so really excited about this series. Alright everybody that's all I got for today I hope uh, you guys have a nice day thank you for joining me thank you for reaching all the way to the end I will see you guys in the next video thanks take care.